We will go to Washington now. Of course, the Prime Minister of India greeted at the White House. He had an intimate dinner. The major theme of Mr. Modi's trip is investment. Can America ship more Caterpillar bulldozers to India to build bridges and tunnels? But it is more Aaron Schock knows this. He is a Republican congressman from Peoria. He is the first congressman for uh, Caterpillar and Big Yellow, uh, as we know it. He has been an early supporter of new Indian politics. Congressman, wonderful to speak to you uh, this morning. morning. What is your fondest wish of this trip? If you could write a script two, three days from now, how would you want this trip to end? Well, two things. One, America's commitment uh, and uh, the prime minister's commitment to work on long-term uh, uh, trade agreement with India and the United States. India is the largest democracy on the face of the earth. They have one-sixth of humanity in their population, over a billion more people than the United States. 800 million of which uh, are in poverty, moving into the middle class, hopefully uh, in this century. And they provide uh, a lot of mouths and a lot of households for us to feed and sell American products to. India historically has been a very protectionist uh, country, but uh, Prime Minister Modi made his mark right. as Chief Minister of Gujarat as being a very pro-trade, pro-business guy, cut out the red tape, cut out corruption. He could do the same thing nationwide in India. It'll be a huge boon to the Indian economy and the U.S economy as well. Right. Aaron, you have a terrific perspective coming from the Peoria School. It's literally Mr. Schock uh, goes to Washington and any American would congratulate you for that. As a member of the legislative branch, what projection would you like to see from the president and the secretary of state? How urgent is it for them to go to India and continuing to advance this theme? Well, uh, a number of reasons. Number one, uh, in that region of the world, it's not only important for our economy, but also for our national security. When you look at the other players in the region, I was in Asia earlier this week. Uh, Japan, our closest ally over there, and, and uh, South Korea are very worried about uh, the puffing of the chef, chest of China, uh, kind of the spreading of their wings in the Asia Pacific. And India is a great counterbalance to them as a member of the BRIC countries, but also as someone who borders Afghanistan and Pakistan. Uh, the largest democracy uh, seems to be a much more uh, able ally for us. And so it matters for us from a, a military, geopolitical, strategic standpoint for us to close, uh, close in our ties and, and build better foreign relation bridge there as well. So economically, uh, the, the, the president needs to go there. Uh, uh, and tell the Indian uh, community that if we can level the playing field, if we can truly create free trade, uh, we can lift up people in India uh, to the middle class and beyond. And certainly uh, they have a lot of uh, uh, folks who uh, would like to come to work in the United States and around the world. And uh, the, the um, uh, immigration law be, that passed out of the Senate would be very harmful uh, to the Indian economy. And Prime Minister Modi, I know, has not only spoken to me personally about that, but I believe we'll, we'll speak to the president about that if he hasn't already during this trip that he hopes that if the House of Representatives passes a similar immigration bill it will be much more generous in its work visas and allowance for foreign workers like those from India to come to the United States. Congressman, uh, one of the reasons you have a, a unique view on uh, and relationship with uh, Prime Minister uh, Modi is that uh, Caterpillar is in your home district in Peoria, Illinois. Uh, can you speak to uh, how easy it is for uh, uh, companies like Caterpillar to effectively do business in uh, in India and whether they're getting assistance from the politicians? Well, it's a great question, and uh, it's one that Modi ran on when he ran for a prime minister of India. And India, if you know of any businesses, U.S. businesses in particular, that do business in India, they will tell you it's extremely bureaucratic. Uh, there's a lot of red tape, but there's also a lot of graft and corruption. Uh, when I met with the, with, with the head of Ford India, which is headquartered in uh, Modi's home state of Gujarat, I met with the leaders of Abbott Laboratories, which is headquartered in Illinois, has a huge facility in Gujarat. They said they located in Gujarat primarily because of Modi's leadership. They said he's a straight shooter, his yes is yes, his no is no. He kept the electricity on, he built the roads he said he was going to build, and in much of India that's not the norm. So if we're going to build uh, more uh, infrastructure, if we're going to sell more Caterpillar tractors, uh, we have to have more certainty in the courts, more certainty with intellectual property. Uh, certainly in India, a democracy is <clears throat> much more certain, I would argue, than even China, uh, which has less uh, property right. rights, human rights, and the like. But India has so much potential if they can create some certainty in the rule of law and courts. Congressman, thank you so much. Coming to us from the Capitol this morning, he is a Republican from the 18th District.